They're some of the richest clubs in the wealthiest league in the world. But they're severely failing their disabled fans. So if I go to Anfield, I don't sit with the Arsenal fans. If I go to Manchester United, I don't sit with the Arsenal fans. That's wrong. With poor access and limited seats, it's a battle that has now reached Parliament. No one is going to argue that, that disabled supporters shouldn't have covered uh, seats. The Premier League face embarrassment as they're shown up by lower league clubs on a fraction of their budgets. They have created a marvellous environment for disabled people. Hundreds of thousands of people turn out religiously every weekend and spend their hard-earned cash to watch their team. But at a time when the game has never been more affluent, disabled fans are getting a poor deal. Anthony has been in a wheelchair all his life and has followed Arsenal home and away for almost 30 years, seeing the good and mostly bad examples of facilities for the disabled. Generally, it's where you put it's, it's a view. A lot of the grounds are older stadiums that have had seats bolted onto terracing, uh, and therefore they're too shallow. Uh, if people in front of you stand up, as football fans will, they don't want to sit down, um, you look at people's backs. Um, case in point was Crystal Palace, Sellers Park, old ground. About three years ago I saw nothing of the game. A lot of stadium that the disabled, the wheelchair seating is pit side, so you're open to the elements of the weather, and that certain parts of the game the place the stewards are stood in front of you and you've got no view of the pitch. Labour MP Ian Lucas says that this is an important issue that needs addressing and has been supporting disabled fans throughout. Having spoken to disabled supporters at Wrexham, which is my local uh, club, I've heard from them how awful it's been for them to simply watch the game they love. They have to be on the touchline in all weathers, and we have obviously dreadful rain and snow and sleet and all the rest of it, and most football supporters have the luxury of being able to go undercover, and all support supporters should have that. Newer builds such as Arsenal's Emirates Stadium have improved the overall standard of experience for disabled fans, with ramps and lifts to replace the steps, as well as viewing platforms all around the stadium. However, there is a much wider issue than just the view of the pitch itself. There is a variety of where you sit in grounds now, that's true. Um, but a lot of the time that's sometimes not with your own supporters. So if I go to Anfield, I don't sit with the Arsenal fans. If I go to Manchester United, I don't sit with the Arsenal fans. That's wrong. There's no, no reason in today's, in today's world, with the amount of money that's in football, that adaptions should not be made, that I can't sit with my own fans. And that has led to problems, verbal abuse, things being thrown, you know, etc. various grounds over, over the years. They face challenges every match day, like this Bournemouth fan who's being told that he has to wait an hour to use the disabled toilet inside the stadium. Back in 2003, the Accessible Stadia Guide was published by the Sports Ground Safety Authority, and this detailed how many wheelchair seats per capacity each ground should have. Shockingly, only four out of the 20 clubs in the Premier League are currently meeting these guidelines, which begs the question of why they haven't been implemented properly. It's a guide, it's guidelines, there's no body, there's no, um, no regulation as to what they should or shouldn't do. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's nothing in, enshrined in either the Premier League regulations or in law that would force them to deal with that. It's all recommended, um, you know, adaptions and, and amendments. Um, and that's what, since I've been going to football, any improvements for disabled access has always been dependent on the will of the club and not by law and not by what they should do. And that's what needs to change. Awareness is the key, the key word, to be honest. And I think, you know, and not trying to make it as a particularly special issue but maybe integrate it into the mainstream issues with the stadium so you don't separate off the disabled supporters you include them and it's more inclusive as a part of the stadium and a part of the issue that needs to be worked on such as viewing or catering or corporate 
Calls for action have become more prevalent in the last season, and the Premier League have responded with a statement in which they have committed to having all clubs complying with the Accessible Stadia Guide by August 2017. They've also promised to appoint a disability access officer at every club, as well as ensuring away sections have sufficient amounts of wheelchair bays in comparison to the home end. However, it doesn't appear that the Premier League have bowed to fan pressure, but instead the threat of legislation. The Accessible Sports Grounds Bill was a private members bill put forward by Lord Faulkner back in 2015 and taken over by Wrexham MP Ian Lucas in the House of Commons. The aim of the bill was to make it a necessity for all sports grounds to meet the regulations set out in the Accessible Stadia Guide. The Equality Act of 2010 lays the responsibility on everybody to provide for disabled access. Uh, but the, the particular powers that relate to sports grounds haven't been properly implemented and the purpose of the bill was to bring forward uh, their implementation and to ensure that football, along with other aspects of society, uh, behaved in a way which uh, allowed disabled people to access, the, access their facilities. Under the Equality Act 2010, all public premises such as shops and leisure centres are required to provide suitable facilities for the disabled. Section 20 of the Act details that all owners and employees have a duty to make adjustments so that disabled people are not at a disadvantage. Stadiums are not exempt from this Act, so why is it that no clubs have faced any claims so far? Who's going to do anything about it? Who's going to sue their own club? Who's going to go against the brand loyalty and the thing they've followed since they were a child and sue them. They're not. Clubs know that and they're, they're, they're banking on that. Equally, if I was to go to, say, Liverpool, as I've mentioned already, what success am I, an individual, going to have against suing a football club for inequality? You know, they'll, let's face it, they'll tie it up in red tape and delay and delay and delay and then the cost will be prohibitive to take any such action. Again, the clubs know that. They're banking on it. Every premises should be accessible to somebody in a wheelchair. You, you go to the traffic centre and you can go in every single shop. You go down Market Street in Manchester and a third of them you can't get in if you're in a wheelchair and it's exactly the same in football, it's exactly the same in theatre cinemas. As of next season, the Premier League will be richer than ever as a new £5 billion TV deal comes into effect. But even with all the financial power, much smaller clubs are causing embarrassment for the league. Wrexham FC play their football down in the fourth tier of the English game. They've been held as an example to follow for providing good facilities for disabled fans. The racecourse ground is not a new building, but suitable adaptations have been made, including the installation of a raised platform at the back of the family stand. They also have a lift, two disabled-only toilets, and are in the advanced stages of plans to insert a new platform in the opposite corner. It's significant that Wrexham is a trust club and is owned by the supporters, and the supporters think that it's sufficiently important to do something about it. We've also had the support of the of the landlords who are the Glindo University next door to, to the to the uh, football ground and they have supported it too. So the whole community has come together because this isn't an argument. No one is going to argue that that disabled supporters shouldn't have covered uh, seats and shouldn't have the right to, to see uh, football in the same way as anybody else. They have they have created a marvellous environment for disabled people and uh, I went and visited and opened the balcony for them during the, during the season. I was really impressed and a lot of colleagues in Parliament have pointed to Wrexham as, as, as a model of what's possible. It remains to be seen whether the good standards set by Wrexham can be replicated across the game, but it appears new legislation will not be the way forward. The Accessible Sports Grounds Bill was thrown out of Parliament at the second reading stage, leaving the Premier League's promise as the only glimmer of hope for disabled fans. It didn't have sufficient parliamentary time and because it wasn't supported by the government. Now the government will, uh, you could speak to them, but they will doubtless say that the steps are in place to, to have the Premier League do this on a voluntary basis, but this is about making sure that people know about the problem and making sure action is taken and that's what we hope for. And can you see the Premier League actually keeping to that promise? Well they better because they'll have to deal with me if they don't. <laughs>